Mr. Goble, and I am here to help you out once again. And today I'm starting a new series, and it's on world civilizations. So today we're going to work on uh, looking to uh, pass a world civilization test. This is unit one, um, where we look at Paleolithic and Neolithic man. Uh, we look at the beginnings of, of, uh, of human existence. Uh, and we um, just look at some of the basics of, uh, of, uh, of things like geography and associated uh, 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 social sciences. So here we go. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and start like we should always start. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start on um, the website. So go ahead. Uh, we'll get to go to World Civ. And uh, down below that, um, we are going to uh, choose unit one. Okay, unit one is where we're starting, uh, which is prehistory. Uh, make sure you're using the packet. Make sure you're using the Quizlets. Uh, the Quizlet is always at the end of the unit. So if I scroll all the way down to the end, there it is. This new video uh, will appear right there, just to my, it would be to your left, okay? All right, so let's get started. So I divided the unit into three pieces, and we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead uh, and switch over to that. So I'm going to go ahead and that, and we'll put up our cave art right there, because this is where we begin. We, we begin with uh, early man basically emerging um, as not the king of, uh, of animals. At first, we've got the dinosaur ages, and then suddenly the emergence of mammals uh, about three and a half million years ago, and we start to see humanoid creatures. So let's go ahead. But um, So that's kind of where we're going to kind of start. But one of, the, one of the things I did before we did that was I covered uh, a few areas to just review. And uh, so this is, we spent a little bit of time um, looking at early, uh, early geography. So looking at the test questions right here, you go ahead and here, let me make me just a little bit bigger there so you can see things a little bit better. Um, so right here is the prehistory test. So if that's what you're wondering, uh, what test we're doing, prehistory. So uh, one of the first things we did was look at geography. We looked at themes of geography. Um, we looked at um, region. Um, we looked at location. We looked at movement, place, um, human environment interaction. But um, some of the early questions I'm going to talk to you about uh, looks at geogra geography, and, and we talked about where you are on the earth. Where where do you where are you specifically at? And that is the the topic of location. So this question is, you know, if you want to know where somebody is on the earth, we use location as an example. Uh, location comes in two types. Um, uh, we we use exact location, or uh, or uh, we use something called relative location, which is what we're close to. Um, the other uh, the other categories uh, cover how things look appear um, appearances can like be the same from area to area and we call those those uh, those similarities we call those regions where things have a similar uh, similar kind of look to them um, similar things that kind of bind them together remember region is a big term it could mean uh, associated uh, proper terms like uh, like states that make up the United States. The United States is a region, um, and the states basically are the little pieces within that region. This next theme of geography we're going to look at is how uh, humans are impacted, or how humans impact their environment, and we call that human-environment interaction. So I know that's kind of tough to see. But um, this is uh, one of the items on the test called human environment interaction. Uh, so when we talk about that, that means how humans basically affect the place that they live, like dams, uh, uh, things like fishing. That is a human environment action. We, we mow the lawn, we, we uh, water things, irrigate. Um, the next one is uh, looking at, um, uh, it says uh, location using your, uh, okay. So this one looks at uh, types of location. So that's kind of a, a section that I kind of looked at. So uh, are you relatively somewhere or are you exactly somewhere? That's basically the question. So if you're, if you're looking at more exact terms, it would be exact location. So uh, your address, uh, your, uh, your coordinates on a map, okay? That's exact location. If I'm close to Walmart, it's a relative location. 
a person who studies uh, human society and their behavior, okay, we looked at some of the associated, um, uh, associated basically uh, sciences that go along with, uh, with, with history, with uh, uh, you know, paleontology, archaeology, but a person, a person who studies human society and their behavior, now you can have an economist who looks at numbers we can and, and how people react to uh, economic uh, factors uh, paleontologist a person who basically says ancient remains uh, geographers who look at the land then you have sociologists who look at people and cultures so so right there I know you can't see that but this question right here all right question 17 studies human society and their behavior that is a sociologist all right. okay anyway I threw that in there because I teach sociology too all right, so our next section, now we're gonna move on to uh, uh, another set of questions. Um, this next set of questions looks at what's behind me right there. Okay, we're basically, uh, I've got a, uh, uh, you know, a, a cave painting. So we're gonna look at early man. The paleo, uh, so early paleontologists started to discover fossilized remains of early humans as late as uh, three and a half million years ago. Um, and those humans were not us, but they were upright right walking. Um, so that also means that they were a word that we call hominids, okay? So hominids are a classification of animals that are up, upright right walking. Um, apes are upright walking, they're hominids, but they're not us. Um, they don't share all of our genetic traits, so there's enough of a difference where we classify them differently. Um, one that's very closely related, Neanderthal, um, was in direct competition with us. Now, there's a lot of speculation as to Neanderthal and whether we share genes with Neanderthal, and I believe the last, uh, the last report was that uh, we do, which, very, which pretty much surprised everybody that, that, uh, that, that Cro-Magnon, or Homo sapiens, um, shares um, the genetics of the, you know, one of our ancient ancestors, which is Neanderthal. Neanderthal is a little shorter, a little stockier, thicker um, than, uh, than the, uh, the taller uh, um, Cro-Magnon, who we call Homo sapiens. Um, so this looks at the, what were the primary activities of early hunter-gatherers, okay? Uh, that is the what marks the Paleolithic era, where basically people that were, uh, were pretty much preoccupied with finding food. That was it. That was what we were doing. We, we had to find food. Um, and that was our, our, you know, our waking, our waking thought. Um, what are we going to do? How are we going to survive? And how are we going to find food today? Um, speaking of walking, um, man uh, left at least from the out of Africa theory, oh, about 250 to three, four hundred thousand years ago, give or take a thousand, hundred thousand years, um, and started to spread throughout the globe. Okay, we know this because of genetic studies and um, grouping of different genetic. Uh, groups of people and how they share genetics and the oldest exist in Eastern Africa. Uh, it says early man reached the Americas before Europe. Um, I would say that's true because it's closer, you know, so you got to think about proximity. Okay. Look at Europe, which is directly north. Okay. Of, of, um, of Africa. And then you look at how far away North America is assuming that that theory uh, holds true. Um, it's going to take longer to get to North America. Um, were the only human remains found based on DNA? Uh, uh, were the only human remains first found based on DNA evidence, uh, and the earliest were found basically in the continent of Africa? Okay, that's what that question has to do with. All right. That pretty much wraps up a lot of the paleontology, uh, um, the Stone Age, we call it. Um, and we need to move on to, to uh, as, as people basically wandered, um, we developed knowledge, okay? So we want to know what type of knowledge we developed. Well, one thing that really separates these periods around 10,000 years ago, uh, which we also call the Neolithic period, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that over to the Neolithic screen right there, um, where people basically start to settle down. We start to basically become um, more homebound. Um, and the biggest, the biggest, the thing that really freed us to do that was agriculture. So it says, following the introduction of agriculture and early man's day of uh, day to day life, what phrase below best re represents us? So we know that villages definitely grew during that time. 
and civilizations would slowly start to develop. Now, these were very basic, small civilizations, not the complex ones that we will see uh, much later, um, like we're getting into five, 6,000 years. Um, this is, uh, you know, we're getting from the 12,000 to 10,000 years ago. Um, uh, one of the things that makes up this early Neolithic period is the early um, domestication of animals keeping basically our food sources close to us, making it easier so we didn't have to walk and find it. We made it convenient. Um, the main reason uh, the Neolithic region is a turning point in history, um, this was, uh, you know, was, was definitely, um, was that we um, were able to, to stay around, to basically to, to create and establish villages, to farm specifically, agriculture changed everything when we started to make our own food and keep our food close to us people started to gather in larger groups and didn't move anywhere near as often okay some people take to, to consider the weather as an issue uh that the weather got better we know that as the neolithic period increased uh, as we got closer to the neolithic period the earth's temperatures got warmer well photosynthesis guys all right, uh, these next uh, basically set of ideas uh, is that as, as, as man became more advanced, we became more complex. We started to basically form what we call civilizations. Uh, one of the projects that we did, uh, we were identifying those, those things that make a civilization. Um, and if you hold a very limited number of tasks, that is a very specialized thing. We call it job specialization. If you basically, uh, um, are, 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 are you know, gifted in uh, painting, drawing, um, that's a specialization. Uh, say you're good at uh, creating uh, and, uh, and adapting uh, to make things easier, maybe technologically, you might be uh, uh, basically part of a civilization. Maybe you're uh, basically, uh, d your, your expertise is communication methods. Uh, you create the first writing systems. You are good at counting and keeping track of records, okay? Um, this is a list of is what is the uh, what, which of these is an element of civilization. Um, think of things that are not elements of civilization. What does it you know? For example, killing a lion with a spear or writing on a stone tablet. What would be the most civilized activity? And somebody would say, well, I got to eat for a living, but writing on a stone tablet is something that you could probably get by without. Uh, where uh, killing an, uh, a lion with a spear is something that you you know. It's not something you'd really want to do because lions were dangerous, at the, uh, but but it was something you might have to do. So, when we look at when we look at specialized skills like writing, um, it's something that we just did because it made our life better. It didn't. It, we could live without writing, but it made life much more complex, and it allowed us to expand uh, away from simple things like creating fire, um, uh, looking for berries, that kind of stuff. So writing on stone tablets is a very civilized thing. Um, let's see, class structures among groups of people. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we look at civilized people is this formation of class structure. Like, I'm better than you, or I am more important to you, and than you because of what I do, or how I do that, or the skill that I hold. Uh, sometimes that separated us from other groups. Uh, maybe I had l uh, lower or less skills. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we separated, but class structures are something you see within these um, early civilizations. So the formation of class structures. Person who engages in specialized skills to a point where he's unique, that is an artisan, okay? If you're unique and you have a really good set of, uh, of skill set and, and it makes you um, very valuable, um, thus you, we want you doing that more than something else. That, uh, you know, it's kind of like, hey, if you're a good farmer, we don't want you uh, basically uh, down at the river fishing. You know, uh, we, we need you up there farming, uh, not trying to, you know, trying your luck uh, with trying to catch fish. We need stuff that's going to, we know we're going to be successful with you on. So you become valuable and you develop a niche kind of thing, specialized skill. Economic system is common in poor, undeveloped countries today. So in poorer countries in the simple, very uh, early um, civilizations, you had lots of what uh, we call traditional uh, traditional economic skills. Traditional economic skills are things like trading. 
you got something I want, I have something you want, let's share. Okay, that's a trade. That's the, some of the first economic uh, thing, uh, economic skills. And then, of course, surpluses started to form, and then it became market-driven. When I had a lot of things, you had fewer things, that means that you were willing to pay for something that I have. Now, as if my things were too abundant and everybody could get them, it becomes cheaper, doesn't it? So we get that supply and demand curve that we basically start to see. Uh, beliefs, custom traditions of specific groups of people. Those are our culture, right? They make up our culture. Remember we talked about culture as being probably the most important thing that separates us more than anything else because culture is something that we develop. It's something that's complex. Um, but color and uh, shoe size, really not a really good way to, to, uh, to differentiate people. Um, let's see, what's not a, a critical element of civilization? Here's our list, technology, system of writing, farming, growing corn, and hunting. Now think about it when you think about critical. Uh, if it's not a critical el element of civilization, well, one of the things um, that you're gonna see within civilization is a technological growth. Uh, farming is definitely. Um, but hunting, if you think about it, is not critical because since we have farmers, we really don't have to, we don't have to always count on hunters. So hunting, even though it's nice and we get food in a more of a variety, it's not necessarily a, something that we have to have. Um, now, if the farmer goes down, we're in trouble because he makes our surplus. A hunter is going to bring back an occasional deer, uh, but on the other hand, you know, he might run into a buffalo herd. He still, uh, see, that's still not going to help us, you know, a year down the, the road when the buffalo are gone. So hunting on this list would be the what I consider to be the less critical. All right, guys, that is the test. 30 items, that's it. Um, some basics of what I would consider to be um, world civilization. Um, guys, ancient cont contributions to world civ, things that early humans, the origin basically of our, of, of our existence. Um, so these are some of the very basics, of course. There's way more things. There's a lot of things we omitted, but guys, that will help you with the test. Think of those things, um, and you'll do just great. Remember, do not forget, okay? Check the website out, go on to Quizlet, um, watch this video, turn the sound down, turn the closed captioning on, and you'll do just fine. All righty. So, for Mr. Goble, good luck. It's all small stuff, it's all easy, and later, and bye.